Hello everybody, this is Dee from Dee's Cute and Crafty and I am back with five Bumblebee DIYs for you. I asked you guys if you wanted to see any more bee stuff or if you were tired of it already and most of you said no, more bee stuff. So I am doing five more and then after this we'll move on to something else. So I'm starting out with this paper plate that I picked up last year from Joanne Fabrics. I have three of these welcome signs from Dollar Tree. I have the burlap roses, some various ribbons. I have my plaster Waverly chalk paint and my Hello Hobby antique wax, a jumbo glue stick and some Mod Podge. And um, I can't remember where the ribbon, I think one of the ribbon, like the gingham came from Dollar Tree and then the yellow may have come from Joann's. So here you see me carefully removing the welcome sign from this Dollar Tree plaque because I'm going to use it somewhere in a video at some point, but I love to repurpose. And then I took my little scraper tool that I got from Dollar Tree. It's with the whittling tools and I scraped off all the paper. Yes, I know you can wet the paper, put a paper towel on it, wait about 15 minutes, and then it comes up easily. But I don't mind scraping it off. I don't know why, but I just like it. So I sit there and I scrape it all off. Here you see me putting on one coat of the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And I'm going to do that to all three of these. And then I'm going to go in with my Gator Sander. And I am going to distress the edges of each plaque. Now I'm going to take my scissors and just cut this bumblebee out. This bumblebee is so pretty. I love how they designed it. I love the colors of it. It was just, the minute I saw the paper plates, I'm like, oh, I have to have these. Look at that. So now I am just getting things in order the way that I want them, looking at it, seeing, hmm, does this look good? Does that look good? And now I'm going to take my ruler and draw some lines because I want the plaques to look like shiplap. Doing a little bit of hand lettering. One is going to say humble and the other is going to say kind. So that when you look at it, it says be humble, be kind. After I do this in pencil, I always go back in with a Sharpie or paint, but usually it's a Sharpie because it's easier to control. I just go back with the Sharpie and make everything dark. So here you see me making my shiplap lines that I told you I was going to do. Lining both of those plaques up, making sure they're even on both sides. Going to do the same with the bumblebee. Then I'm going to go in with one of the whittling tools from the Dollar Tree, and I am just going to scrape that um, MDF board and make a groove in it. Now, the tool you see me using is not the right one, it's more of a rounded tip, and it did manage to scrape the paint off, but it did not dig down into that MDF board the way I wanted it to and give it a nice groove. And then I realized I had the wrong tool. So I picked up the one that had the pointy end on it. And now I'm beginning to make some headway here and getting that MDF scored the way I want it. Now that that's done, I am going to Mod Podge the B onto the wood plaque. Now that that's all done, I am going to go in with my antique in or my antique wax 
from Hello Hobby, and I'm just going to just go in on the sides or all around the edges a little bit, and then with what's left over on the brush, I will go ahead and go over the whole piece, but it doesn't really give me a whole lot on it, and I didn't want a whole lot. I just wanted it to look a little distressed on the edges, and then I sand it down and make it nice and soft. Here you see me going in with my wood glue and my hot glue for that short-term, long-term hold, and we're going to get these all glued together. Now I'm taking some craft sticks, I'm going to cut them in half, and I'm going to glue them to the back just to give it some more stability, making sure everything stays put. Doing a little cleanup. I used a little bit too much hot glue and so it seeped through. And now I'm just cleaning that up before I place the other craft sticks on the back. Now I'm trying to figure out what do I want to do to the middle of it. Do I want to leave it plain? Less is more. Do I want to embellish it? I'm thinking of putting a solo with flower there. Then I have my um, lacy kind of burlap ribbon from Joanne Fabrics. Although Dollar Tree just came out with their version of this ribbon. And um, they have it in green, the neutral color, and in cream. And it's very similar to this Joanne Fabrics ribbon. And of course, it costs a lot less. It's $1.25. I did pick up some of that when I was at Dollar Tree. So I decided that I was going to just do a bow using that neutral lacy ribbon and some of the yellow to pick up the yellow in the bumblebee. And you'll see me back and forth with the flower, but I ended up not using the flower. I thought the flower was too much and that it took away from the sign. And here I'm just fluffing and fussing with my bow. And once I get that glued down, we're going to call this one done. And it is my favorite of the five that I'm going to show you today. I love how this turned out, and I hope you do too. Moving on to DIY number two, I have one of those little houses from Dollar General. I have some craft paper. I have some paper, some flowers from Hello Hobby, some of the Dollar Tree wall stickers. And I think that is it for this DIY. So this craft paper that I have is like 20 years old. Not even kidding. Um, and I pulled it out of my stash because I wanted the yellow sunflowers that are on the bottom of it. So all I'm going to do is repurpose this little house, had it in my stash, didn't really know what I was going to do with it, so here we are. I have a purpose for this little house. Just going to trim around it and get that cut out. I took the metal roof off of it, and now I'm going to just place it back. I took it off to get all the paper off of it. it previously had um, some white paper with flowers on it that I, it was cute, but it wasn't what I wanted to do today. So I took all that off and now I'm just going to get that paper glued down with a jumbo glue stick from Dollar Tree. And 
and then I will put the metal piece back on using some all-purpose glue and some hot glue. Before I do that, I'm going to cover up the hole in the back because I don't want um, anyone to be able to poke their finger through that paper and rip the paper if they pick it up or they touch it or whatever. There needs to be something covering that hole. So I just took a piece of cardboard, cut out a circle, and placed it there, and now I am cleaning it up because there's glue everywhere. I don't know why I'm so heavy-handed with the glue today, you guys. Don't know. And now that that's all cleaned up, I am going to put the roof line back on the house. Now I'm going to take my purple, my purple, my paper, <laughs> some flowers from Hobby Lobby, and I'm just going to give this little house some dimension. And I'm just going to put a flower everywhere that there is a flower on the craft paper. Now I'm going to take one of these bumblebee stickers, and I am going to do my little fussy cuts with my tiny scissors and then I'm going to attach that to this house. It really um, adhered very well. It's self-adhesive tape or self-adhesive on the back of this so it really stuck nicely and I didn't have to do anything else to it except put it where I wanted it to go. I'm going to add one more flower and a bow and we're going to call this one done. I would just like to say thank you to everyone who stopped by today. Thank you for enjoying my content. I, I'm just really blessed. That's all I can say every time. I'm so blessed to have you here, and I'm so grateful that you like the content and that you watch. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope you'll consider subscribing. I would love to have you as part of the Cute and Crafty family. And if you've been here from day one, you guys know I think you're amazing. Thank you for coming back. Moving on to DIY number three. I am using my Waverly Plaster Chalk Paint. I have some various beads that I'm going to use. We're going to do some hand lettering. I have two packages of these sunflower wall stickers. I have one of the Dollar Tree internet signs. So let's get started. All I'm going to do is take my plaster chalk paint and give this one rough coat of paint. And now that that's dry, I'm going to take mainly the flower part of this wall sticker. There'll be a little bit of the leaves in it, but what I really want is the sunflower. And I'm going to use a total of five of them. So I ended up having to use two packages of them to get the flowers that I needed. And I'm just going to adhere them to the sign. Now, to save time from you guys having to watch me pencil all this in, I did go in with a pencil and do some hand lettering. And it says there are so many beautiful things to be. There are so many beautiful reasons to be happy. That's what I wrote. <laughs> so anyway, I wrote that using my you know, that faux calligraphy style writing that I like to do. And I do it in pencil first, so as you can see, so I can erase anything that I don't like. And then once I get it the way I want it, I go back in with a Sharpie marker and make it all nice and dark so you can see everything. I have a paper towel down so that I don't smear the pencil writing that's underneath my hand.
once I get it written in Sharpie, I go back and I erase all the pencil markings. And there it is. Now I'm just going to start. Um, well, what I wanted to do was I wanted to use um, that big bumblebee, but it was too big. It didn't go well with the sign. It was just more than it than I needed. So I just drew one. I just drew one on a piece of paper and I used a Sharpie and a, um, a yellow Sharpie and a black Sharpie to color it in. Then I cut it out and I just put it on my sign with a jumbo glue stick and it worked out perfectly. So now I'm just adhering the sunflowers and I love that they are hanging over the edge of the board. That is definitely the look that I wanted. And after I get all of them on, I'm going to go back in with my gator sander and I'm going to just sand the sides down to get rid of the excess flour and make everything nice and crisp. And then I will Mod Podge everything down. I am going to put a beaded hanger on it and a tassel and then it'll be done. These DIYs today were super simple and really pretty. I love how they turned out. And this one is my second favorite of the five. Again, thank you to everybody that's new here. Thank you to everybody that's been here. I hope you'll hit that subscribe button and the notification bell as well so you never miss out on a cute and crafty ideal with D. Now I'm going in with my Mod Podge and I'm sealing everything in. Just trimming up my tassel a little bit. I really thought a tassel would be super cute on this DIY, and I do really like how it turned out. And here I am fussing with this, with this jute. I did not leave myself enough jute cording on this side of the side to tie a knot. So I had to break out my tweezers to get in there and pull that loop through so I could make a knot. And this is it. 
Moving on to DIY number four. This is a quick and easy wreath. I have that leftover bee from my last D, um, DIY video. I have a boxwood wreath from the Target Bullseye Hotspot. I have one of the gold welcome rings from Dollar Tree and some bumblebee ribbon from Hobby Lobby. I will be using my green paddle wire and my black paddle wire from Dollar Tree. And I'm just doubling it up because I want it to be very secure on here. All I'm going to do is take the metal welcome ring and wire it to the boxwood greenery wreath. This one is so simple. If you blink, you're going to miss it. Now that I have that secured down, I am going to make a bow. Just pinching everything together and tying it down with some jute twine. I'm also going to tie this bow on. I am not going to hot glue it because I think with this DIY, the way that it's coming together with the boxwood greenery and the wire wreath, it's not a lot to adhere um, that bow to if you try to glue it. I think it would just make a mess. So it's so much easier to wire the um, metal to the boxwood instead of trying to glue it. And it's so much easier to wire that bow to the wreath instead of trying to glue it. And I'm also going to wire the bumblebee. This is one of the ones left over. I had two from that Dollar Tree Butterflies and Bees sign. And so this one's from that. I'm just going to poke two holes in the bumblebee using my awl. And then I'm going to use my black paddle wire and adhere the bumblebee to that wire wreath and that boxwood greenery. And this one will be done. And it's so cute. Very simple, but totally worth the work. I mean, just easy. It really was, I can't even call it work. This was really enjoyable to do. I'm just looking, seeing where I want that bee to sit. Making sure I'm not covering up my welcome word. And I'm just going to wire it on. Easy peasy. This is DIY number five and the last one in this video today. I'm going to be using that little bumblebee button, some of the Americana golden straw paint, various ribbons and twine. I'm going to be doing a little bit of hand lettering and I'm using one of the, it's either a Dollar Tree mason jar or a Dollar General mason jar. I'm not sure, but they both sell them. So I'm just removing the metal part at the top and I'm going to sit here and scrape all of that paper off because I like to. I just, I enjoy doing it. It's therapeutic for me, but I won't make you watch. <laughs> so now that I have all of that scraped off and sanded it down, I'm just going to go in with that golden straw and give it a single coat of paint.
If you guys are enjoying this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that you like my content and it pushes me out a little bit more. They start to share it with other people and I would appreciate it if you like it, you would share it as well. Now, anywhere I got some of that golden straw paint, I went back in with my raw sienna and I just fixed it. I painted all the way around the edge. So here you see, I've already done my hand lettering like I like to do in pencil. And now I'm going back in with my Sharpie and I'm just writing home is where my honey bee. So now I'm going to take my little bitty B button and I am going to attach it to my mason jar. Just cutting that back piece off of it so that it sits flat. A little bit of sanding. And then I'm just going to place it at the bottom of that mason jar using a little bit of hot glue. I'm going to put that metal lid back on and because I thought it looked a little flat I decided to do a little bit of stitching and dots in black and white along the edge of the jar. I'm going to wrap it with some of the jute twine. And now I'm erasing all of my lines. And we're going to give it a cute little bumblebee bow. I picked this ribbon up at Hobby Lobby or Hobby Lobby at Dollar Tree. So if you guys find it, grab some. It's really cute. And I'm just going to trim down those tails just to make sure it doesn't cover up the wording. Now I'm going back in with that yellow and white twine from Dollar Tree, adding that to the top as well, just a little bit. And then I'm just looking at it thinking, it's cute, but it, it seems a little flat. So I am going to go in with that raw sienna, and I'm just going to distress the edges a little bit and in the middle. Not too much, just a little bit. And just going to sand it down and make it nice and smooth, make it nice and soft so it's not too, too stark. And then I looked at it and thought, yeah, it looks okay, but it was missing something. So I just went in with some lines and dots. Just doing a little little bit of you know, squiggles all the way around the jar. And then I went back in with a different Sharpie because the one I was using didn't seem um, dark enough. It seemed like it was running out of ink or whatever. So I used another one. And then I thought, oh, it needs a pop of white to pick up the white that's in the bow. So I went back around with some white, and that was the touch that it needed. I love this one. So here's the final reveal of everything that I made today. I love how they all turned out. But again, the Be Kind, Be Humble is my very favorite one. I hope you guys like the crafts you saw today. Leave me a comment. As always, let me know what one was your favorite one out of all five of the DIYs. And please continue watching, continue enjoying, continue communicating with me. I love it so much. You guys, pop over to my 
private Facebook group, Dee's Cute and Crafty DIY Divas. Ask to become a member and admin will let you in and I can see all of your beautiful DIYs as well. I look forward to that. If you guys post something, I always make sure I look at it and I comment and I just love it. It's such a nice community over there and I would love to have you over there as well. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. And until I see you in my next video, be blessed, be safe, and craft something beautiful today, you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.